Another day, another hematology video from Medicosis Perfectionalis. In my series about bleeding and coagulation disorders, we have been talking about fibrinolysis for several videos. In the previous video, I've told you the clinical uses of TPA. Today, let's talk about this fibrinolytic or thrombolytic therapy with the great streptokinase. It's actually not so great. It's allergic. It has increased risk of bleeding, etc., as well as transient hypotension. So with that being said about the crazy garbage streptokinase, let's get started. This is a sample of my previous videos about bleeding and coagulation, so make sure to subscribe and save this playlist. As you know, hemostasis, the prevention of blood loss, has many steps. We have talked about vasoconstriction before, temporary plate plug, coagulation, now we're talking fibrinolysis. Plasmin digests fibrin into FDPs, digests fibrinogen into FDPs, digests 5 and 8, 2 and 12. If you leave plasmid free all the time, it will degrade every clot and you will bleed. That's why we need it in an inactive precursor called plasminogen. We need TPA to activate it into plasmin. Plasmin, the fibrin lysin, comes from plasminogen, the pro fibrin lysin, which is a zymogen, which comes from the liver. When the clot is being formed, plasminogen gets incorporated into the fibrin fibers, then TPA comes, converts plasminogen into the active plasmin, degrades the fibrin into fibrin degradation products, fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products, the stabilized fibrin into D dimer. So here's the whole story of fibrinolysis. First, let's form the clot intrinsic and the extrinsic coagulation pathways. Prothrombinase complex, activate prothrombin into thrombin, fibrinogen into fibrin. Plasminogen is getting incorporated within the fibrin fibers together with TPA. TPA will activate plasminogen into plasmin. This process takes days. Plasmin will degrade fibrin into fibrin degradation products, degrade fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products, and will degrade the stabilized fibrin into the dimer. Not only that, it will digest 5 and 8, 2 and 12. Plasmin is a bad bastard. Two types of plasminogen activators, the tissue type plasminogen activator and the urokinase type plasminogen activator, TPA, UPA. We find TPA from the endothelium, which type the injured endothelium and UPA was first discovered in the human urine. Maybe you can urinate on a clot to break it down. Who knows? I'm just a stupid idiot. Plasminogen and TPA, they get incorporated into fibrin forming a ternary complex will help in plasminogen activation into plasmin. If you want to learn more about hematology, I have 50 hematology cases. Many of them are really difficult. They are available on patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Enough said. You know that we have TPA and UPA. We have the recombinant TPA or our TPA and we have the streptokinase coming from the bacteria. So streptokinase come from bacteria. It's less effective and we talked about it. Oh, oh we're talking about it right now. And it's triplase acylated plasminogen streptokinase activator complex so it's the streptokinase coupled to the plasminogen then we have the recombinant guys alteplase retiplase tenecteplase dismutiplase clinical uses of tpa and all of these crazy drugs clot lysing drugs thrombolytics fibrinolytics or clot busters we have acute mi strokes dvt and pe never use it in hemorrhagic strokes only in ischemic how do you tell the difference between ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes? CT scan of the head without contrast. Here are the clinical uses of TPA, coronary artery occlusion, the acute MI, ischemic strokes, only the ischemics, not the hemorrhagic, pulmonary embolism, don't forget, the earlier the better, time is money, and catheter-induced chemical thrombolysis of the clot, poke it baby, poke the clot, and add chemical to the catheter, the chemical being TPA or urokinase. So we can use it to open the blocked coronary artery that's the cause of the low output cardiac failure, what the layman call it cardiogenic shock. And we can use TPA in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria patients because they are more prone to thromboses. Stroke is divided into ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, due to occlusion of an artery, due to a bleeding artery. How to tell the difference? Head CT scan without contrast. Ischemic stroke is divided into focal and global. The focal, TIA, and ischemic stroke. The ischemic stroke, thrombotic, embolic, and lacunar. What's the most common use of TPA or streptokinase? Ischemic strokes. Too little TPA and you will clot, too much TPA and you will bleed. 
When you have too much TPA, we call this the systemic lytic state. You are breaking down clots all over your body till you bleed to death talked about this slide in the previous video but repetition is the mother of pedagogy two types of plasminogen we have plasminogen that's local that's incorporated to the fibrin and when then we have the plasminogen that's circulating freely in the plasma cool when you activate the plasminogen incorporated it gives you localized fibrin lines it breaks down the fibrin only at that location which is good which is desirable which is useful on the other hand when you activate this plasminogen you end up with systemic lytic state. You are destroying fibrin fibers all over the body, including the useful benign clots that you have when you like hurt yourself in a minor trauma or something. This increases the risk of ear bleeding. That's why systemic lytic state is crazy. Who activates this plasminogen? TPA or streptokinase or alteplase or whatever. Who activates this? Again, TPA. So TPA drugs have two different subtypes. Fibrin-specific plasminogen activators, which is the superior class, alteplase, retoplase, tenecteplase. And fibrin non-specific plasminogen activator, they activate plasminogen all over the body, streptokinase, garbage, anistroplase, garbage, urokinase, garbage. I'm not saying garbage. Of course, they are better than nothing. They are better than leaving the patient to clot and die, but they are inferior to those great guys. Alteplase, retoplase, tenecteplase. Why? Because these guys are fibrin specific. They only activate the plasminogen that's incorporated within the fibrin fibers. They will only bust this clot and not any other. So, streptokinase, not an enzyme, cannot directly activate plasminogen into plasma. Instead, it forms a complex with plasminogen. This yields a conformational change into the plasminogen. Plasminogen now is accessible. The active site is exposed. So this complex now activates plasminogen into plasmin. Plasmin degrades fibrinogen and fibrin and the stabilized fibrin. This complex is fibrin non-specific. It's one of the ugly class, the inferior class. So it activates both the plasminogen, which is incorporated into the fibrin, also known as fibrin-bound plasminogen, this will yield localized fibrinolysis, which is good. Also, it will activate the circulating plasmin, OGEN, into plasmin. This is called systemic lytic state. Increase the risk of bleeding, which is horrible. That's why streptokinase is inferior to alteplase, for example. Now, let's talk about side effects. Allergic reaction, big time, 5% of patients. Transient hypotension, and I will tell you why. Then, if the patient can develop antibodies against streptokinase leading to decreased effectiveness. Patients with prior streptococcal infection may develop antibodies against streptokinase, again decreasing effectiveness. Streptokinase is not that great after all. Streptokinase is administered via intravenous infusion. There is a difference between intravenous injection and intravenous infusion. Intravenous injection takes, I don't know, like 10 seconds, depending on the nurse. If you have a crazy nurse, it can take two seconds. But intravenous infusion is a slow process, slow cooker, over 30 to 60 minutes. So in case of myocardial infarction, when we say intravenous infusion, we infuse streptokinase into the vein, and streptokinase now is acting as TPA, activates plasmin ogen into plasmin to destroy the clot. Intravenous infusion. So why do we get transient hypotension after streptokinase administration? Let's talk about the high molecular weight kinogen. Welcome back, we missed you. Thanks to colicrin, we have bradykinin. But I didn't tell you that plasmin can also activate high molecular weight kinogen into bradykinin. What will bradykinin do? Bronchoconstriction and dry cough, ve increased vessel permeability and angioedema, increased pain, increased vasodilation, and natriuresis leading to hypotension. So transient hypotension after streptokinase administration is bradykinin induced. Streptokinase is highly, highly antigenic, which means allergic reactions are common. If a patient had taken streptokinase in the last six months, do not, do not give streptokinase again. But it's like three months ago. I don't care. You can get an allergic reaction, which is never fun. It's an absolute contraindication if you have a patient who had streptokinase in the last six months. By the way, that's a very unfortunate patient that needs streptokinase twice in a six-month period. 
Okay, let's say you have a patient with acute myocardial infarction and you would like to use lytic therapy. The most effective method is an anticoagulant such as heparin plus a fibrinolytic such as TPA or streptokinase. Add them together, two are better than one. But don't forget that percutaneous coronary intervention is superior to TPA, big time. But if we're talking TPA, you better give it with heparin, baby. Why not warfarin? That's a very good question because warfarin is very slow, very slow. Like, have you heard of heparin bridging? Warfarin is very slow, man. It has to go to the liver and then order the liver, the gamma carboxylation, which needs vitamin K, to stop producing the vitamin K dependent coagulation factors, which are prothrombin 7, 9, 10, protein C, and protein S. So the moral of the story, warfarin takes time. You give heparin because it's an acute myocardial infarction, you stupid idiot. The new crazy generation, anistriplase, which is also one of the inferior class. We get streptokinase. Just add plasminogen and an acyl group. Single bolus infusion. This is more convenient to administer than streptokinase. Remember, streptokinase is administered via IV infusion, which takes half an hour to one hour. This is just a single bolus infusion, so the nurse can like go texting and go eat her lunch again. Fibrin non-specific plasminogen activator. It's non-specific. It's one of the garbage group. Will cause systemic lytic state, increased risk of bleeding. Allergic reactions, transient hypotension are also possible. So the only thing that's good about anistriplase is single bolus infusion. Thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, get my notes, get my cases by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and I'll send you my bloody Dropbox links. Thank you for watching. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.